like 10 hours looks like it was the most. So let's say this isn't broken up enough and we want to control the legend more. So let's bring back our, well, let's leave the display like that because it looks kind of cool. So if I wanted to change this legend, if you look here under um, their sunlight hours analysis, there's this legend parameters. Um, go to number five, the extra one, and it's this top one, ladybug, a second one with a big P on it. It's ladybug legend parameters. So if you click this one, this lets you pick, kind of like, it lets you control kind of how your legend will start to work. So for low boundary, we could put, this will be what the bottom is, so let's put zero. High boundary looks like 10 so we could try let's see if it ever hits 12 and then the number of segments you just need to have at least like whatever you had here so 13 would be if you count the zero as one so if I put 13 here and then I can connect that to here so watch what happens to the legend over here so I have this right now if I move these guys over, I can plug this guy right in there and see it grew longer. And I think you can make this more. Yeah. So see, I can add more subdivisions to see like more precise. Like if I was if I was worried between like fractions of hours instead of just total hours, like I don't want to know. 10 hours or less I want to know like half hours how much sun is actually going to be in there um, then you can do it that way now let's say for whatever reason this doesn't work with your presentation and you need different colors or this doesn't create enough contrast for you or maybe it's too distracting all like the colors there's a ton of ways you can do it if you wanted to you can manually change the color using um, custom colors so see here the one that's being grafted if you go under custom colors and read what it tells you, you it kind of walks you through how to make it on your own you can also kind of cheat a little bit if you come under here um, I think it's this one the great gradient library when you drop that guy in um, see it gives you custom colors coming out and on the index, it just has a bunch of them already set up that it, it might be useful for different types of analyses. So there's like multicolored, ecotext, sunlight hours, thermal comfort, and cold hours hot. It doesn't really matter which one you use. It's kind of, since this is a presentation tool, it's what works best for you. Like, or if you don't like any of these, you can go and make your own. And then here, see it failed right now because there is no input. It's telling me like you couldn't collect something. You should connect at least two custom colors. So that's why I dropped back down to nothing because now it's failing. But if we look at this, it goes up to 23. So it's really 24. So if I create a slider from 0 to 24 and I put that in, now you'll see it'll jump back and it changes the coloring. So if I want to move this along, so option one is that color, two is these colors, three. So you can like try them all out. Some of them, like see this one's like grayscale. So that one might be cool if you're like, don't want to see a bunch of colors. Um, it's just basically like legibility, like which one do you think reads the best for what you're trying to do? Um, Some of them are pretty similar, some of them are like all about cold. It goes into the red over there somewhere. Where's the red? I don't think we ever hit it. Um, so then you can also bring the step down. And that'll affect how it displays because you may never be hitting the top colors if you don't get enough exposure.
So you can totally customize it. And sometimes you run analysis and everything gets more than like the maximum value of exposure and just colors your whole thing one color. Because the legend is set up to look for, it's not sensitive enough. It's basically like, or maybe it's too sensitive and you get like only one color. So you gotta like recalibrate it to fit the studies that you're doing. This looks like one of those 4th of July ice cream pops. So that's really useful and when you bake it it'll keep these colors and then if you had like there's also a way to like pick like Pantone colors if you knew like exactly like what you wanted to do and like coordinate across stuff. Some of these are get crazy like highlighter. So that one's pretty simple looking. It's whatever reads best and what's nice is we can run this analysis and then do it like let's say you wanted to compare your building during winter time versus summertime and show how you're compromising one for the other one or you could pick morning versus night and then use that to prove why you chose to locate like offices on one side of the building versus the other side or um, there's tons of ways you can start using it for, as a design tool um, and the nice thing is you can create these definitions, save them, and then the only thing you'll have to change, you'll always have to rerun this one, make sure it turns on, it's flying, and then maybe you re-download the EPW, or if you're in a different location, you get the one for that location, and then you just update these, like where's your target, where's the sort, and then everything else, you'll just be changing like what time period, you don't have to reconnect everything, it'll stay there. One thing I would recommend is like save these files. So we can call this one um, Ladybug class. What's today? 10 23. And then once you have it, go through and disable all of the components before you close because if you don't, once you open it, it will launch like a hundred things and like it'll just be slow. So like it will instantly go to the website and like, so like as soon as you open Grasshopper and open this file, like your internet browser pops up and the computer starts going slow because it's, start, it's trying to like run the radiation, the solar study, like the, the views, it's trying to do them all at once. And you're like, whoa, slow down. And then like, you did, or it all just fails as soon as you open it because it doesn't find the stuff. So. It's up to you what you like doing um, and how you work best. And then another cool thing is you can study this and then take... So there's two ways we could change the inputs here. We could change north, which in real world you can't do. But we could use this to prove why the orientation of our building was the best orientation. Because you can show the same thing. If I bring back my hidden geometry and I pick my building, and watch this, now I just rotate it 30 degrees. It will rerun the analysis immediately. And I can grab all these guys and just rehide them. So now I've rotated my building and the solar study ran again. And I can compare them now back to back and see where it had more exposure or less based on just rotating it or just tilting one side. Or if you have like an angle in your building versus straight, or you could take like the top edge of your building and start making it overhang a little bit to see how that impacts it. And you can do a lot of these little tweaks and have kind of information to back it up. So it's not like you just saying, oh, this looks best, or I just want it to make a curved building. Um, or it will be, it'll perform better just because you said so. You can actually show that there's research behind it that will prove that it would. Do you guys have any questions on this part? Does it make sense? Okay.